what the chiropractor is talking about, but here's a solution that you can tell your niece. Number one, she should do an enema with the four following herbs. White oak, bayberry, slippery elm, marshmallow. Is she ulcerated? Yeah, well, they probably had to make a Mercedes payment. Um, if you give... White elm, excuse me, would you do those again? White, uh, white oak bark. A oh, white oak. Bayberry bark. Slippery elm, marshmallow. Now, any these, one of the white oak specifically? Any one. Any, I, any one of the white oak? Same? They should all act as astringents. Okay, you can even throw in witch hazel, which is also an astringent herb. And what we're going to do here is this can be made as a tea, but predominantly because of the Crohn's, this is an enema. It's also good for irritable bowel diverticulitis and colitis. So the way to make it is a tablespoon of each herb in about 16 ounces. Take distilled water. I'm not, I don't believe in tap water. Distilled water. You know, I want to glow at night, so I'm starting to drink tap water more <laughs> so I don't get lost when I'm out on the road. But distilled water, bring it to a boil, take it off, throw in the herbs, let it steep, strain the herbs, and use it as an enema. There was a young woman here in town who had ulcerated Crohn's and was in um, the intensive care unit. And I don't know if she was here at McKenna or she's a local school teacher or, or in a hospital in San Antonio. But indirectly I got involved and gave this thing. She was in the intensive care. She couldn't even do water. They had to feed her intravenously and if she drank water she would bleed. I mean, there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Mm. And uh, I told her parents what to do. They actually did it. They made the enema at home. They took it in. After, I think, three days, we got her out of intensive care. After seven days, she was out of the hospital. And what the doctor had threatened her with, if she ever did anything like that again, the doctor would drop her as a patient. Oh. So if you're going to take <laughs> care of yourself, <clears throat> if you're going to take care of yourself naturally, and you can, there, there's very little out there that you can't <coughs> gain control of. There's very little that you cannot master. Even cancer, if you catch it early enough, can be cured. I've, I can't tell you in doing talks like this, I've met guys who have come up to me and tell me how they cured their prostate cancer because the old cancers are on the rise. I don't know if you saw this or not, but by 2010, which is what? Nine months, 12, 11 months away, and cancer will be the number one killer in our country, surpassing cardiovascular disease. Why? Because there's a hundred thousand chemicals in our environment. You're eating them, you're breathing them, you're drinking them, and we are insane enough to want to put out more nuclear power plants. So it's not enough we're poisoning ourselves, we want to poison the earth as well. And you all being into organic gardening, I think you can appreciate the, the horror and the insanity of that particular move. Be that as it may, um, those four herbs, and if it's ulcerated, throw in a tablespoon of cayenne. It'll seal it up, two, three applications. She should be good to go. She also has uh, dyslexia. No. Does that be related to protein production? Oh, I have no idea because I'm dyslexic, and um, I, I just think it's just a sign of uh, God only knows, <laughs> and I don't think she's saying. Uh, so, yeah, no, I can relate to the dyslexia. Other questions about, yes, sir, and then Talk yes. to us about grapeseed oil versus olive oil. Two different animals. Grapeseed oil is really more of an antioxidant which is what it's being used for, whereas olive oil with your unsaturated fatty acids are building blocks. So you have two different animals working in two different biochemical ways in the body. I would say to you, antioxidants are wonderful. You know, it's really interesting. Um, three to five years ago, there was a couple of articles that came out in the newspaper, and maybe you all read them, where vitamin A was dangerous and you shouldn't take anything over 10,000. And then the other one was vitamin E was a waste of money, right? Right. So here's the deal. Uh, and I'll go to vitamin E first because it's the best antioxidant. I know there's pycnogenol, there's grapeseed. 
Um, but vitamin E is the best because the way a free radical works, everything in nature, our minds, seeks balance and harmony. We get caught up in marketing, we get caught up in advertising, we get caught up in this, that, and the other, and so sight. But the truth of the matter is your body seeks balance and harmony. When you bring in a toxin, and it creates what's known as singlet oxygen, now you have an oxygen atom that is imbalanced. There's two proteins in the nucleus, one electron in the outer orbit. So what that atom is doing is it's looking to steal an electron from wherever it can get it. When it does that, it creates damage. It can damage the DNA. It can damage genes. So they know, medical science knows, free radicals create disease. Okay? So we don't want you doing vitamin E because you stop the process. If this is grapefruit seed and, and pigmogenol will go through and capture some, some singlet and they're done working. Vitamin E on the can give out an electron after electron after electron continue to function. So that's the with vitamin E. Vitamin E better. These you should be up to about 200 units a day. Guys, eight or two at the and the reason I say 12 is I have some clients who are taking that much vitamin E and told me she had gotten rid of cysts in her breast due uh, to the vitamin E. So I'm a strong recommender of vitamin E. And men also because we're developing breast cancer in record numbers. And that's another reason for the detoxification and really cleaning up the diet. Cancer is on the rise and you may all know of children brain, with brain cancer young guys between 16 and 27, it's up 67 percent. Breast cancer in women, they're seeing it in younger women in the stores. And of course prostate cancer with us older guys. So, and these, and what all of these glands are made from is fat and what's in the fat? Toxins. That is why you want to clean yourself up. Clean up your diet. And, and it's also good to take showers every now and then. Um, the real, the other vitamin that they talked about was vitamin A. And in fact, in California, there, there are signs on the walls, there used to be, I haven't seen them anymore, I think they took them down, but it said anything over 10,000 uh, 10, units of vitamin A will damage the fetus, and you shouldn't take any more than that. And if you were to come to me with a cold, and if I was still, you know, working in the aisles, and you came in and said you had a cold, I would say, oh, wow, you know, you need vitamin A and take 300,000 units a day. Now, I did a talk for some pharmacists, and I, I said that do 300,000 units a day for three days. That's close to a million units of vitamin A. And after, you know, uh, three days, don't do it for three days, and you'll be good to go. And you'll get rid of the cold. If you're already sick, It'll take 36, 48 hours. It's a done deal. So I had a pharmacist come up to me at the end and say, you know, you're really a threat to human health because what you're telling people is really terrible information because vitamin A can gum up the liver and you'll create a problem. He said, and I'll see to it that you, you never speak here again. So the next year I was, I was there and um, I did my talk and, and a guy came up to me at the end and said, do you remember me? And I said, no, sir, I don't. He said, I'm the guy that chewed you out last year about vitamin A. I said, I remember. I couldn't sit down for a week. I, re I remember the conversation clearly. He said, you know, my wife started to get sick, and I gave it to her. <laughs> <laughs> True story. He says, I owe you an apology. And he said, I I'm amazed. I've never seen anything work like it. See, the beautiful thing about vitamin A is multiple. Number one, every mucous membrane that you have that's exposed to the environment is nourished.